Hello, what's going on? Alright, this is Dave from TV Games. I have been taking a little bit of a break this past couple of weeks just to kind of recharge myself. It's been a lot of hard work with the past 20 episodes, so I will resume pretty soon. I still have some things in the can. But in the meantime, we will do August pickups. Alright, so starting with the first thing first. A uh, copy of Star Fox for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which is not really that spectacular of a find. It's pretty cheap, actually. But I kind of like this game. Uh, of course, Star Fox 64 uh, for the Nintendo 64 kind of supplants this. It's kind of hard to go back and play this after playing that, but this is still kind of fun in a uh, just to see where the whole thing started. Now, moving from Nintendo to Sega, a um, copy of Night Trap along with the manual for the Sega CD. This was the first issue of Night Trap. I, um, I uh, originally had this when the Sega CD first came out and I sold it like soon thereafter, the, um, soon after the, uh, the controversy started where the game was taken off the shelves, so I got 40 bucks for it back in the day. Only paid 18 for this, or 15 even. So, kind of made, my money, my, kind of made a good investment on that, but whatever, it's for me to keep, but Night Trap, Dana Plato, uh, full motion video game. I'll discuss that in a future episode, maybe, but uh, it's definitely a uh, interesting title to have, if not particularly fun. Uh, next up, I got this at a thrift store, a copy of Space Jockey, I think for a couple of dollars. This is for the Atari 2600. The funny thing about this is that it's not a very good game, and I mean, it's not even... There's absolutely no depth to it. I don't know if maybe I need to get further in the game. But from what I've seen, it's just things coming at you and you shoot them. A copy of Complete in Box Commando uh, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It even has the whole Captain Commando uh, logo on the back, back when, uh, back when those little laser grid uh, Capcom boxes that were infamous for their silly poses. See the original Mega Man box. Um, I got this for $10 because the seller said that he couldn't Put it for more because there was so many rental stickers on it as you can see there's a rental sticker here there's a price tag there if you go inside the case itself by the way i like these little plastic protectors i might buy some more for my other boxed games and as you can see here there's there's a rental sticker here there's a upc on the back and yes as you can see it's five screws if that matters to you uh this apparently was from video town with an e at the end or video townie and you know what i like i like the rental stickers myself because it kind of gives the game a little bit of a backstory uh let's see now moving on to the vinyl section i didn't pick up anything interesting vinyl wise just a few records here and there but nothing nothing out of the ordinary uh i did pick up some 45s these were i think uh two bucks a piece if not a little less maybe a buck 50 a piece uh let's see we have Afternoon Delight by the Starlight Vocal Band. Uh, Fascinated by Company B, which was a, uh, look it up, it was a freestyle song in the 80s. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, A Lot of Love by Nicolette Larson. Uh, is this a double A side? No, no, it's not. I don't even know what the other A side would be. A uh, copy of The Letter by the Box Tops, Alex Chilton, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, band? Yes, okay. Bill's uh, giving me verification on that factoid. Uh, the jukebox copy only on to, of Too Legit to Quit by Hammer. Not MC Hammer, Hammer. He dropped the MC at this point, and pretty much that was the downfall. Also, all the money spending and the change of the rap uh, world. Color Me Bad's I Adore Me More, which again also is a jukebox copy because it's the same on both sides in a Motown sleeve for some reason. Take a dip in the sea of love with the honey drippers. Uh, 40, what is this? This is the, this is the original of issue, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Not gonna matter. And also, Feel So Good by Chuck Mangione, which you know by the da -na 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 song. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. You've heard this song before. Now to the things that my friend Scott gave me. He was, um, he's actually provided, him and his wife have provided a lot of good things to my collection over the years. Um, they just recently moved, so they gave me, he gave me some other things. He just didn't want to pack in the truck or 
clutter up his new house with. So he's in Chicago now. Hopefully he finds some things out there to give me. <laughs> Just kidding, Scott, if you're watching this. Uh, so anyway, uh, one of the things he gave me was... What the hell is that? Well, this is, of course, the inside of a uh, of an NES. It has the, the 72 pin connector, all that good stuff connected. So, uh, I haven't tested it out to see if it works. I went ahead and cut the... Uh, I, I disabled the 10 NES chip just out, you know, since I have it open now, I might as well just do it. Uh, but otherwise, I haven't tested it out to see if it works. Uh, it could turn this into something, but for the most part, I'm probably just going to end up using this as a spare board, just in case something happens to another NES and I have a I have parts for it, more or less. Uh, next, uh, he uh, he had given me something really cool here. That's uh, Satomi Tron Pac-Man, which uh, came out in the. Uh, what year did it come out? I think it was early 80s. I should have definitely done some research before I did this video. But nonetheless, here it is. Works perfectly. It's missing a couple of stickers up here. But other than that, it's pretty pretty good shape. All right, finally for today's finds, this is actually something that Bill got. I gave it to Bill. or, or uh, But it's basically uh, Think Geeks. It's in the box right now. Think Geek's uh, phonograph, Bill Jones photograph player. Uh, let me pull it out here. Oh, the gramophone, Bill Jones gramophone. It is very full of plastic. Right, here it is. Uh, it's definitely. Oh, can you get a shot of this? Basically, the record goes here. It has different things. You can actually record something onto vinyl. Uh, I think it comes with a cable. So that you can record onto kind of like a uh, like a like a little piece of paper that's supposed to be the vinyl. Uh, I'll give you a little demonstration of this, but I just gotta find a new place to put this uh, to put it so you can get a shot of it. Uh, but before we do that, I'll show you some of the things it comes with. It comes with an instruction booklet, but yes, it's all in Japanese. I'm assuming it's Japanese. I apologize if I got that wrong. But yeah, everything, the instructions, literally are all in Japanese, the gramophone's uh, instructions. Uh, my friend was able to put it together, figured it out. Uh, I'm able to work it just kind of like by, figure, by uh, guessing, you know, how it's supposed to work. But the little things like recording onto, recording onto a disc, here are the spare discs, by the way, you can record onto. Uh, it'll elude me completely. It comes with an adapter, for some reason, an adapter, scissors for some reason. Yeah, see, so it comes with scissors, and then, I, I don't know what any of these things do. You know, besides what they should do, but it's definitely an interesting piece, but uh, Bill's gonna be taking this home with him one day. But I will show you how it works before we uh, before we end things here. All right, so we're back here. I have the uh, the make your own gramophone uh, set up here. Uh, the horn is on correctly now. It has to go on the holder. I grabbed a copy of Boogie Oogie Oogie by Taste of Honey. This is actually a duplicate, and the sound quality is not that great on this record anyway to begin with. So uh, it's been twisted up. I put the needle down. The needle is actually very, very sharp, and it seems very damaging because there's no way to counterweight to make sure everything is not gonna cut into the vinyl too harshly. So let's give it a shot, and there you go. It's actually fairly loud, albeit terrible quality, and can't seem to have any control over the speed of it the way I, you know, uh, one would on a regular turntable. Anyway, this is Dave for TV Games. Uh, see you next time when uh, I'll have a hopefully a brand new episode. Have a good one. See you next time.